It takes a lot to shoot a YouTube video in the field about film cameras. You literally have to have two or more cameras with you at all times, one to shoot and one to show uh, what people are doing. When people make these breakdowns of what's in their camera bags, they usually do them at home in a studio and it's like a ton of stuff that you probably wouldn't carry with you. Um, it's like too much stuff for a bag. Today we're up here in the Sierra Nevada mountain range at Onion Valley Campground and uh, this is literally what I brought with me to shoot film and shoot these videos in the field. Let's do it. Hey team, Will here with another film photography video for you. If you love film, if you love all things photography and developing and scanning, um, these are the videos for you. This is the juicy stuff. Please consider subscribing. It goes a long way to show your support for the channel and for me doing this. Speaking of support, I'm not sponsored by anything on this table, but I have had everything on this list for quite some time and I love each piece and I put them to the test and my stamp of approval on them. I'll have affiliate links down below. If you use those links, it gives me a small commission on the sale. It's at no additional cost to you, but it goes a long way in supporting the channel. And it means a lot to me if you use those links, even if you're buying it later, uh, just come back, use the same links. All right, so let's dive into it. So to start off, obviously, we have to talk about my bag. Even though I bring a way bigger bag to shoot weddings and larger projects, I'm gonna talk about my smaller travel bag that I brought on this trip. If you want a full rundown of my wedding photography gear, you can comment down below and we can dive into that too. So I've got the Revite Jumper. Um, this thing's awesome. I have it in the olive green. The biggest thing about this bag that I love is that it doesn't really look like a camera bag. It looks like a Jansport. That's really important to me uh, and maybe to you um, because when you're traveling, you don't really want someone to snag your camera bag with you know, maybe thousands of dollars worth of equipment in it. So I use this because it's kind of um, under the radar and it's small. So what I really like about this is the separate com camera compartment that you can access on the side here. Um, I usually keep my 645 in there. And then down here, you have um, a whole set of compartments right here. I'll show a clip now of what it looks like with everything loaded in there. And um, it has a lot of great space. I can fit my drone, I can fit the 645. I can break down my digital camera and fit that in there. And that's all contained down below. On top, it still has room. Uh, it still has room for some small essentials and that's some of the other stuff that's in the bag. It has enough room in the laptop section to have a full 16 inch laptop. That's what I run with. I didn't want to bring that on the trip this time, but I brought it because I uh, had to edit a video on the road. So that's why I have that with me. And then in the front pocket, it's got, you know, all your little doodads, a couple pockets there, really easy. Um, the new edition has a spot to hook it to your luggage. And I think that's awesome. Little phone pocket right here and um, water bottle holder right there and tripod mount right there. And I'll show you what all that looks like with some B-roll that I'm probably overlaying right now. So that is the Brevite Jumper, love that thing. So my camera of choice on this trip is the Mamiya 645 Pro. It is my main carry normally, it's my go-to grab. Um, it's pretty awesome and it's got removable backs for changing out any different types of film on the go if you're working on any projects. It's a great camera workhorse. I actually, this is new to me. I've got the winder, the standard winder rather than the power winder. I've had the power winder with me and that thing's really big and kind of really heavy and um, it has six AA batteries in it, so it's really heavy. So I, I didn't bring that on this trip. On there it is the 80 millimeter lens. If you know anything about medium format cameras, this is actually a 50 millimeter equivalent for, for standard 35 millimeter cameras. Yeah, this is my baby. This is what um, all the images you'll see from this trip. Oh, something else that I love about this camera is it has this metered prism, and it's like one of the only metered prisms I've ever cared about on a film camera that I actually trust. But speaking of meters, I don't normally bring a meter with me because I actually use my phone. I use the Lumu metering app. I like that 
app a lot. So for the Mamiya, I uh, usually gravitate towards Portra 400, but I've been dying to really get into Portra 800. And um, so I bought a lot of boxes and I've been really shooting it and really enjoying it. I've shot three rolls so far and I'm gonna be shooting a lot more. A lot of people say that the skin tones are better on Portra 160 and Portra 800 right now. Testing that out, trying to see what I like. So even carrying the 645, I'm usually actually carrying some sort of 35 millimeter. Today it is the uh, Minolta Hymatic AF2. This is a point and shoot 35 millimeter film camera that I've been loving. I'm just shooting Kodak Ultramax in there and it's a great little point and shoot. I really like it and I picked it up for really cheap. So it's awesome. So I brought my drone with me because I never know when I'm gonna be able to fly drone at this place. Sadly, I wasn't able to fly drone, but um, the drone I bring with me is the DJI Mavic Pro 2. Um, I could talk for days about my drone if you want to learn more about that. Um, comment down, I'll make a video about it. Um, but yeah, I bring this guy. This is um, a little bit bigger of a drone than a lot of the ones that they're producing now. And I like that. It's actually a good thing for me because um, it's very windy in California, it's windy up here. And for that, I, I, uh, the bigger the drone, the more it can handle the wind. So that's why I grabbed this guy and that's why I like it a lot. I love carrying this thing. Here's the remote for it. California's crazy bright. So uh, I use the Polar Pro ND filters for it, the 8, 16, and 32 pack. I love it a lot. I actually use that 32 a lot if I'm shooting in bright daylight. These usually are always on the drone. I rarely take them off unless I'm shooting super dark. The digital camera I take on these shoots is the a7 III. It's what I shoot everything that I have on. I've got two of them. Um, I only bring one on these camping trips, but we've got two for the wedding business and I absolutely love it. It is a great camera. It's being used right now. I can't show you it. I'll try to take some b-roll on my phone, I guess, and show you that. And I've got two lenses with me today. I've got the Tamron's, the, the 17 to 28 and um, the 28 to 70 and those are great lenses uh they work really well with the native autofocus um and i like them a lot for shooting video so he does a great job of video and they're lightweight and small usually also when i'm shooting like portraits with it i use the zeiss 55 and that's an awesome lens it's really great it's small so it's a really small little package so you've seen a lot of those smooth shots on my videos that is the weeble s the zayun weeble s this thing is awesome i love it dearly for all of my wedding work and and professional work i use this thing um i just use this thing to death it has a removable base so you can move it to the top you can hold it like this make things really smooth um, this is an upgrade i got semi recently um, last year and i love this one even better than my old one balances really well it has a bunch of features i don't use um, i really want to start using some of them but i haven't really dove into that yet that this thing's awesome i highly recommend if you're looking for a gimbal if you're shooting digital this thing's great so to hold my cameras i use peak design uh, camera clips and their um, anchors and i absolutely love them i don't use their bags yet but i would love to buy one they're kind of expensive though i've got one right here on my mamiya it is awesome i usually have the base plate on but i'm actually using that on the a7 three right now i'll take a picture of that so you can see what that is um, these are my favorite things ever they're little squares and they can be mounted to a tripod in either direction and they're awesome and so the anchors clip into those and you can use your peak design camera straps with their locking mechanism and you can easily get your camera in and out that's great for me putting cameras on tripods that's great for carrying different cameras and switching them out all the time i do that so frequently i love peak designs design um they're straps are really awesome they are lightweight small and they've got a grip on one side slippery on one side and they've got this cool like ratchet system that can easily change the height and i think that's really awesome when i want to pull the camera up really high walk really fast when i want to put the camera down i can do either of those really quickly i love peak design i really suggest picking them up i also use the clip that can clip onto your bag and you can clip your camera in. I usually do have it on my bag. I left it at home. I did forget some stuff on this trip. So that thing is awesome. Um, peak design all the way. 
go for it. On a trip like this, I usually carry some extra batteries. I've got two for my digital, um, some for my uh, recorder, extra little microphone things. Speaking of my recorder, I use the Tascam DR10L. This thing is really awesome. Um, I could talk about it for days. I use it at every wedding I shoot, and it is a recorder and not something that sends something back to your your camera and that's great because no digital interference if there's any interference in the air or other radio signals it won't mess this up it records to a card it has a backup so that if i speak too loud that it understands that and has two recordings and i can use the recording that has lower signal the preamps in it are awesome if you ever see me wearing a lapel it's because i like the sound from this way better than putting a microphone on top of my camera or anything else so let's talk about cards. I've got a little card holder, waterproof card holder. This thing's great, just basic little thing on Amazon. Um, it's pretty empty right now because I've shot a lot of gigs recently that I have left at home. Um, I'm using the 128 gigabit SanDisks, the Extremes, those are awesome. Never buy those on Amazon. Fun hack there is that there's a lot of uh, fake sellers on Amazon, so watch out for that. For the audio on my camera, if I use it, I use the video mic the Rode Video Micro. Um, this thing's awesome, it works really well. Um, I've got the little dead cat on it. Um, I use this for backup audio. Again, I like the audio from this way better, um, but I do have this with me. So for my tripod, I use a super basic tripod that's super cheap on Amazon. I do wanna to upgrade to the Peak Design one eventually, but it's expensive AF. Filters at the moment, um, again, this is all on the camera right now, is the moment variable ND. I was using Tiffin before, but um, it didn't have hard stops and this one does and I really like that. And I'm able to use it really well on my wide angle lens and that works really well. Some last bonus things is this moleskin journal. I carry this everywhere with me and I use it all the time. It is how I write down all of our business ideas, all of my YouTube ideas. Yeah, my goals, all sorts of stuff, videos I wanna work on. I carry that with me and a black pen. I'm using the Pilot, you know, those little jelly ones. Those are great. So that's pretty much it of all the things that I bring on a real camping trip. These are literally things that I have with me, uh, even things that I've forgotten. Um, and that's pretty much all I have brought on this real life trip. I do have one more video from this trip coming that's gonna be on composition. And I can't wait for you guys to see that one. So stay tuned for that one next week. I hope this video helped you think about what you should bring on a trip, a camping trip or a small trip. And I really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any other suggestions for things I should be carrying or should consider carrying or that you carry, write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. And I really appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.